I wrote an article about the book 1984, mm -hmm. uh, where the idea was the government was going to have all these surveillance technologies yeah. to watch us all the time. And in a sense, that's been reversed. We are the ones with the technologies to watch the government. Now, the government also has their own technologies, to be sure. But um, with our own iPhones, with, uh, with the um, uh, social media and so on, uh, the government knows we're watching them as well. And I think that is having a good effect on how they, how they act. Um, what, what police used to do 50 years ago in secret, I think we'll never know a lot of those truths. And now it's really hard if you're a police officer, I think every moment of every day on the job, you have to think about someone's watching me, anything I do could end up as the next viral video that uh, everyone watches. And I think that's got a good effect on their, on their behavior. So virtual surveillance is when the government wants to look at what we're doing in the cloud or in the internet. Uh, they're trying to monitor our emails, our text messages, our web searches, and so on. Uh, and that has, it, it, that has a lot of interesting questions to it because it really depends on the kind of internet um, surveillance they're conducting. So for example, if they want to monitor our uh, real-time communications, whether it's over telephone or over email or texts, uh, that's strongly protected by the Fourth Amendment and by legislation uh, because that's the, got the highest level of privacy. Those kind of private communications, we have the highest level of privacy in those communications. Uh, other kinds of virtual surveillance, such as uh, if they want to see where we're browsing on the web, uh, have a much lower level of privacy. Uh, I, I analogize that to if you're going shopping. If you want to go out to a store and, and look at different items in a store, uh, that's pretty a public thing. Uh, so if you want to go to certain websites, go to Amazon or New York Times website, uh, it doesn't infringe on your privacy that much for the government to know the site that you're visiting. Uh, so it really depends on the kind of information they're gathering when they do virtual surveillance. Hyperintrusive searches, by contrast, are, as the name implies, uh, very intrusive on our privacy. Uh, this is when, for example, they want to um, uh, infringe on our bodily integrity to take blood from us. Uh, that's a very intrusive search. Uh, it's when they want to install video cameras in our home. Uh, also a very intrusive search. And so these searches uh, under the law have uh, the highest level of privacy. You have to not just get a search warrant, but you have to comply with what's called the Title III regulation, which is a congressional act, uh, and you have to make a much higher showing than you would for a warrant. Those are very hard um, uh, orders to get. And then high volume data collection uh, is something that's very common these days, sometimes known as big data. Uh, the government essentially is looking at a lot of information and then using algorithms to uh, compile that data, get information about us. And that's really where a lot of the exciting law is being written about right now. Uh, so for example, if the government wants to track where we go on public roads, uh, generally if they want to track where you go uh, on one trip, that's not protected information. Uh, police officers always been allowed to follow us in a public place. That's not a problem. Uh, but if they put a GPS device on our car and track us for 24 hours a day for an entire month, uh, they're getting a lot more information about us, high volume information about us and they can see patterns in our movements that might give them information we wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't otherwise have about us. They might know uh, when we deviate from a pattern on a certain day and that might tell them uh, whether or not we're going to uh, a certain pharmacy or to a psychiatrist or to a motel to meet somebody. Uh, and so there's concern that uh, what they, although when they find one piece of information it doesn't give them much, if they do a high volume amount of information, they can get a lot of secret information about us. So that's once again, we're looking for a balance. At what point do we restrict police when they want to compile all this information to, to learn more information about us.